I don't know what I'm going to even call this video, what the title is. I'm recording it before having an outline or a plan because I just got off a call with a client who, like many of my clients, perhaps like you, experienced some tension between her and the CEO because of the culture of the company. So what I want to do is share with you how something I learned in my marriage has profoundly changed the way that I work with senior executives, other employees that I know is going to help you if you're in a situation where you have that tension between you and the company and the culture that the senior executive might be propagating in the company, that's going to really help you change your mindset and have a great experience with that CEO, but also in your role there. Hi, my name is Sean Summerkamp, and this is Motivation Ear Christian Coaching. I post two videos a week, so please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can be reminded when I do. Please also consider becoming a member at motivationear.com. Your membership really supports this channel. Thank you. Okay, the situation that I just experienced with my client, it's a new client and has explained how the CEO probably acts a little bit like or a lot like a narcissist, is wanting to micromanage everybody, is not letting this employee nor most of the other employees that work for him in this startup to really explore their ideas, to try out new things, to be creative in problem solving so the company can grow. And as a result, it's shut down creativity. The CEO pretty much wants to rubber stamp everything and is not giving my employee or the rest of the employees the freedom to really explore and use all of their gifts and talents. What this has led to is a shutting down of creative thinking for my employee. And what I shared with her just now is a technique that I learned from a book about marriage. The book is the John Gottman book, The Seven Principles for Successful Marriage. I think that's what it is. But Dr. John Gottman did some amazing research that he referred to as love labs. These love labs are where he took married couples, brought them into an environment, staged environment for an entire weekend, an environment that looked like a home, and monitored how they communicated. And he called them love labs. He did this for something like 25 years. And what he discovered was marriages that were destined to succeed had a very unique way of communicating. Marriages that were destined to fail or at the very least have a lot of trouble in the future also had a unique way of communicating. And he came up with what he referred to as the four deadly horsemen. I'm not going to go into great detail about each of these four deadly horsemen, but what he refers to them as are criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling. And in this book, the profound insight it gave me was to stop building a case against, in this case, my wife, but in your case, in the case of my client, to stop building a case against our CEO or our other boss or our employees or a customer, to stop building a case in our mind, to stop collecting evidence against this person that we're having this conflict with. As you know from a lot of my other videos, it really is just about differing core values, differing personalities, differing behavioral styles. But what we can do, along with some of the other techniques that I have taught you on this channel, is to be mindful that we are making a case against them as if we were a lawyer in a court of law, you know, putting them on trial. If we collect lots of evidence against them, we will convict them in our own minds. And as I've shown you in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 20, which I'll state again here briefly, do not revile the king even in your thoughts or curse the rich in your bedroom, lest a bird of the air carry your word, a bird on the wing report what you say, when we make this case against them in our mind, they're going to know it. They're going to read it. We can't hide what we're thinking about or what we're feeling. So the thing that really, really helped my marriage almost 15 years ago now, we've been married for 20 years, but I started working on this 15 years ago, is instead of making a case of all the reasons why I had a right to be angry or upset at my wife, 
I started to replace that with thoughts of great times that we had. And what you can use for your career, this technique framework from Dr. John Gottman, is to think about all the wonderful, pleasant things that really are admirable about this boss. Think about what's excellent, admirable, praiseworthy about this person that we're having a conflict with. In our mind, before we meet with them, every time before we meet with them. In the morning when we're praying about them, God help me to have a great relationship with them. In that moment, think about all the wonderful things about them that are true. Yep, you can build a case against them of all the horrible things they do, the terrible ways they manage, the incapable their incapabilities of being a great leader. Yeah, we could spend our time on that. It's not serving us very well. So instead, let's really pull together a list of great qualities and things about them that make them who they are, the admirable person who they are. And as you know from the video dealing with office politics, I talk about again and reinforce, I'd say go watch that. I reinforce the concept that it really is just personality differences. It's core value differences. It's behavioral style differences, as I mentioned earlier in this video. You can also take a look at negativity attract negativity. I think that one is going to give some more insight into this. But the principle that I want to convey to you here in this video is when we stop making a case against them and replace that with wonderful things about them and focus on those instead, it changes our very energy, our demeanor, our presence when we are engaged with them. And what's going to happen is they're going to soften toward us. They're going to start to treat us differently. They're going to really give us the freedom to be the great leader that we know we can be in their organization and help the organization thrive. And of course, it's gonna help us really enjoy the ride more. And as we do this, we can have a better impact on that person for Christ, but within that company, as we increase our influence on the others around us for Christ. Ultimately, it's gonna glorify God. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for two new videos each week. Tell me in the comments below about your career situation and I'll make a video for you with a shout out. You can also become a member at motivationear.com. Your career is not just a way to make a living, it's a way to transform the world.